One of the greatest influencers of all time is Daniel. And I'm reading the book about Daniel really began to have me thinking about how his days were similar to our days in that we are introduced to a disruptive thinker. And we're living in an age now where everything is changing. In fact, the world into which we were born no longer exists. And one of the things that Alvin Toffler said, and it's an interesting quote, is that the ignorant and the unlearned uh, of the 21st century will not be those who do not know how to read or write, but those that do not know how to learn, unlearn, and relearn. In the book of Daniel, and we're going to introduce you to a particular scripture in a minute, Daniel was such an amazing um, disruptive thinker. Uh, I, it reminds me of, uh, again, the days that we are living in. Um, in the Old Testament again, and you could read the entire text from which our presentation is taken from out of um, Daniel chapter 2, but I want to, for this presentation, turn your attention to Daniel chapter 2, verse 32 to 35, to really to give us context for what we are talking about. The Bible said that this image's head was of fine gold, his breast and his arms of silver, his belly and his thighs of brass, his legs of iron, his feet part iron and part clay. Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay and break them into pieces. Then was the iron and the clay and the brass and the silver and the gold broken two pieces together and became like shaft of the summer threshing floor. And the wind carried them away that no place was found for them. And the stones that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. There's a scripture that says the stone that the builders rejected became the chief cornerstone. Again, in the book of Peter, it says we are lively stones. And this is alluding to the age of the kingdom, the kingdom age. Scripture says in the book of Matthew 6 that we should seek first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and all these things will be added. The word seek means that you have to expand the energy, you have to expand the uh, time, and you have also have to expand your, your intellectual ability as well as your resources in order, order to find this kingdom. The message of the kingdom is the most precious, valuable message that the body of Christ has today. Why? Because it's a message of empowerment that gives meaning, hope, dignity, and purpose to all humanity. It's a message that calls for a paradigm shift. And I want to park that there, how you're thinking. How are you thinking about yourself in this world? How are you thinking about um, your role that you play in the unfolding of God's plan for your life? And when you look at your life and you compare it to where you, would th you thought it would be and during this time, especially this age and stage of your life, are you living the life that you envision? Are you married to the spouse of your dream? Are you working in your dream job? Are you living the life of your dream? And I want you to respond um, because this is going to be a call to action. And I'm really setting you up to make a decision as to what you are going to do this year. There's a scripture from out of Psalm 24 that says, lift up your head, O your gates, be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory will come in. Now, a gate, Lift up your heads, O ye gate. A gate happens to be um, a portal that gives you access. And a door gives you access as well. So there are two portals, the door and the gate. The gate gives you access to property. It gives you access to relationships that were off bond to you, access to um, intellectual property, information, wisdom. It gives you access to networks. It gives you access to resources. This is what a gate does. 
but a door is a portal that gives you um, a different kind of access. It's access to opportunities. 2024, and I want you to make note of this because I'm talking to you not only prophetically, but apostolically and from a place of transformational leadership. And why are all these words are important? Because we are living in a century that is going to be marked by not only transformational leadership, but thought leadership as well. In our text, we are introduced to Daniel interpreting a dream. Now, the dream was given to Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar was not a Jew. He did not have a relationship with God. But what he had, he had resources. He had a position of power. He had dominion over a region. And one of the things that is missing in the body of Christ is having an understanding of why we are here in this generation. We are not here so that we can create more choirs. We are not here so that we can create more prophetess, so to speak, in the dimension of the church. But we are here as a church to um, to renew our spiritual and social contract with the world and its communities. We are here so that we can create communities that thrive and nations that prosper. We are here as solution carriers. We are here to provide thought leadership and transformational leadership to the world, to its community. We are here to be solutions and answers to the prevailing problems in the world. And what it's going to take, it's going to take a paradigm shift. Now, if God could give Nebuchadnezzar a dream that stretched not just for uh, Babylon as a superpower, but every superpower that would proceed after that. Now, the problem with Nebuchadnezzar and the dream that he had was that he could not um, remember it. In other words, it came from God. It didn't come from his God. It came from God. He couldn't remember it because he couldn't remember it. There was no interpretation. He reached out attempting to get the interpretation from those that were involved in the dark art and they didn't understand and they couldn't interpret the dream. They couldn't even uh, uh, recall the dream. Why? Because it did not come from a diabolical source. And there were two types of wisdom that are prevailing in this world that is going to give you dominion, that is going to give you access, that will also give you opportunities. James talks about it. If any man lacks wisdom, let him act from God, for, for it from God. But he also says that there is two sources of wisdom. One is diabolical and divisive, and the other one comes from God. And of course, that brings about wholeness and health and, and happiness, and it brings about what we need in this world today. Two kinds of sources. And so the source of Nebuchadnezzar's dream was not a diabolical source. It was coming from the mind of God. And in Daniel chapter two, you, you can read about it, read the entire chapter, but for brevity's sake, and I only have a couple of minutes to really give you all, everything that I'm trying to give you for today so that you can make some heavy decisions that has the power to transform your life. One decision, can change your life. And one conversation, it's the power of a conversation that holds the key to your destiny. And you can see that in the book of uh, Genesis, where one conversation expelled Abel, uh, uh, expelled um, 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 uh, the two, um, Adam and Eve expelled Adam and Eve from the Garden of Eden. Just one conversation expelled them from the Garden of Eden. So whoever holds your ear controls your destiny. And so, you know, Daniel, in Daniel chapter 2, 32 to 35, if you could go there with me, please. And I promise you, what I'm about to share with you is going to change your life. And I want you to stay to the end. 
because I'm going to make you an offer, an irresistible offer that nobody in their right mind should should uh, walk away from. So I want you to stay from the end and make sure you're call, calling your friends because this is a prophetic moment that I want to, to ask God to open up your understanding and enlarge your territory, allow you to think big, allow you to think bigger, much bigger than what you're thinking again. So let me start all over. Daniel chapter two, verse 32 to 35. This image, image's head was of, of gold, his breast and his arms of silver, his belly and his thighs of brass, his legs of iron, his feet part iron and part clay. Thou sawest till a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet and were of iron and clay and break them to pieces. This was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold. It was broken to pieces together and became like shaft in the summer threshing floor. And the wind carried them away that no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the images became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. Daniel chapter 2, verse 44 to 45 finishes uh, Daniel's thought. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms. The scripture says the kingdom of our Lord are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ. Jesus said, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness and all of these things shall be added unto you. And the Bible said, and it shall stand forever. For as much as thou sawest, the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, that it break in pieces the iron and the brass and the clay and the silver and the gold, the great God had made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. And the dream is certain and the interpretation thereof for sure. Now, the world that we live in has been created by dreamers. And we all know that. We can go back into the Bible to see how God actually changes the world through dreams. We can look at the life of Joseph. But that's not only Joseph who was dreamers. We could look throughout history where dreams actually shaped the world. Why would God give a non-believer a dream? Could it be outside of Daniel that there was no one else that was paying attention? And in this season, it is vitally important for you to begin to pray prayers that are different than the prayers that you are currently praying. Because most of us are praying amiss. We are praying about something that has already existed and we're asking God to turn circumstances around. But what if God wants to give you a Nebuchadnezzar experience, a Hannah experience? What if he wants to give you a Joseph experience? Would you be so distracted by what the enemy is doing that you will miss what God is assigning you to do in this season? Have you ever felt as if there's got to be something more? By virtue of the fact that God is stirring something up in your spirit, it is proof positive that maybe God is calling you to be the next dreamer. And maybe what he's doing with you is build capacity in you so that you can not only receive the downloads, but you will not lose it through spiritual abortions and write that word down because this is what was happening to uh, Nebuchadnezzar. He couldn't recall what, what God had downloaded in his spirit by way of a dream. And it bothered him. So he called the wise man. They didn't have capacity. Then they called, he called Daniel. So there are two, two, uh, um, uh, principles that I want you to learn here. Number one is the person that is going to be pregnant with the next move of God. 
whether it is bringing new ideas, medical ideas, whether it is bringing new technological ideas, new educational ideas, right now here at Sydney Trim Ministry and Trim International, we are now building a virtual environment. We are moving into the next phase of human um, progress. And we are not just talking to alpha generation. We're not just talking to Z generation, millennials, baby boomers. We're not just talking to a generation that exists. We are preparing for the beta generation, a generation unborn to time. And if you are writing your books, if you are building your buildings, for this generation, you have already, you are already obsolete. And what you need is, is someone not only to, to, to mentor you, you need someone who can give you the structure so that you can hold on to what God is speaking to you and the enemy not cause spontaneous abortion. What uh, Nebuchadnezzar was suffering from, he was suffering from, and I wrote this down, spiritual amnesia. Have you ever, ever had a dream that you wanted to remember and you woke up from that dream and you said, I'm going to write it down. And then by the time you got out of the bed, life happened and you forgot the dream and you can't remember and it bothers you. It's like a splinter in your spirit where you, you can't reach. You know you had it and you just want to recall it because you knew it was God that spoke to you. Have you ever had a revelation as you're reading the Bible and you say to yourself, I'm going to remember it, but you forgot what God had downloaded by way of re, uh, by ray, by way of revelation. Have you ever been driving in a car? Have you ever been walking on a treadmill and God gave you an instruction? God gave you a revelation. God gave you a breakthrough idea, but you forgot it. Many of a innovator has forgotten it because they have not been um, exposed to information that will enlarge their intellectual capacity so that they can hold on to those thoughts, hold on to those ideas, and then attract around them the people that can bring it to pass. And I'm reminded of the Moses who was given a revelation of building the tabernacle that would represent the presence and the power of God. And he wasn't called to do it, but he was, he, 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 God used his spiritual womb to download a revelation. And that revelation, he was able to hang on to it. He was able to articulate it and he was able to draw to him individuals that had capacity to bring it to pass. And what I wanna speak over your life right now, letting you know, that you are next in line. You are not out of your mind. God is getting ready to use you. You could feel it in your spirit. It almost feels like you're under a demonic attack, but it is not a demonic attack. You are pregnant and you are getting ready to birth out the plans of God for this nation, for United States of America, for Canada, for Africa, for Europe, for South America, for Central America, for Brazil, Bahamas, Bermuda, wherever you are from god is getting ready to use you mightily and and what you are sensing is the holy spirit stirring up in 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 your spirit and uploading what god has downloaded by way of a dream and remember dreams are not just what you do while you're sleeping is what you do while you are, are awakened and so dreams, dreams are veiled in mystery and they have been, they have been alluring and that they, they've been used to weave strands of significance and relevance in the fabric of human progress. They've been used by God to guide, to inspire, and sometimes to forewarn. You can look back in ancient civilizations such as uh, Babylon and, and Greece and uh, Great Britain and Rome, and you can look at modern societies where Martin Luther King was a dreamer, where the Sheik from Dubai was a dreamer. And, 
They had dreams that changed the world. You could think about Nikola Tesla that left an indelible mark on, on electricity. You could look at the advancements of humanity. You could look at social shifts. You could look at technological shifts. You could look at Joseph who interpreted the dreams of Pharaoh where he was able to say, yes, you saw seven fetid cows and you saw seven uh, uh, thin cows and, and in emaciated cows. And this is the interpretation of your dream. You are going to have seven years of plenty and seven years of lack. And during an economic downturn, when everyone else was going into poverty, Joseph was prospering. Brothers and sisters, this is the next uh, few years are going to be seven years of plenty. And then in 2031, the world is going to go into seven years of lack, but you will not be affected because you are going to have the mantle of Joseph. You look at Daniel, the, he interpret, interpreted Nebuchadnezzar's dream. God gave uh, Jacob a dream of a ladder that was reaching heaven. It symbolizes technological advancement long before we had 5G and long before we had satellites, Jacob had a dream that, that, that there was going to be an interconnectivity between heaven and earth. And, 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 and we see it today with satellites. Solomon had a dream. Paul had a dream. We are looking at Martin Luther King. He became the beacon of racial equality and harmony because of a dream. And, 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 and although they, they they struggled with civil rights. You are introduced to Rosa Parks who said, I refuse to sit in the back of the bus, but in the front of the bus. I look at Nikola Tesla, Marie Curie, who, who had a dream about uh, developing and finding uh, red, um, uh, um, radi 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 something that brought about radiology and Walt Disney that had this dream and in, in, in imagination, he said that I'm going to change culture through entertainment. And today uh, we see culture being changed, not just through entertainment and education. And there's a new terminology called edutainment. And now if you are in this space, the space of education and entertainment through e um, AI, you've got to be able to think differently. You've got to be able to ask God, God, give me a dream, give me a vision. And you've got to go into your prayer closet and you've got to form your prayers around what God is speaking to you to do because what's bothering uh, God about this world, God will, will cause it to be a burden to you so that what bothers you is what God gave you the burden for. I'm, I'm, I'm burdened for nations. I'm burdened for leaderships. And this is why I have formed Kingdom School of Marketplace Ministry. You will see Kingdom School of Ministry, but it's Marketplace Ministry. And I asked the question, God, why would you uh, download a dream in a non-believer? And God said, because he was the one that not only had the resources, but he was the one that was paying attention. And God used him because he was in a position of leadership. But in Babylon, God also positioned Daniel gave Daniel a, a an amazing um gave Daniel um an amazing anointing amazing ability um to graduate um magna cum laude from the University of Babylon and he 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 was uh, number one in, in education, God gave him wisdom, God gave him skills. And for those of you that are degreed, you've got to understand that there is the University of Babylon, but there is also Kingdom University as well, Kingdom School of Ministry, so that God could build 
capacity for what he's calling you to do. The Bible said that you are lights of the world, city set on the hill. He also says these blessings shall come upon you in Deuteronomy 28, 1 to 2, verses 1 to 2. These blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you hearken unto the voice of God. I alluded earlier, one conversation can change your destiny. And I'm hoping that that is the one conversation today that is going to change your destiny. You are not out of your mind to be thinking what you're thinking. It is God that is speaking to you. When God spoke to me that I should resign from being a senator and I should give up the idea of being the first black female prime minister of my nation and uh, relocate to the United States of America, it was a crazy thought. And I, I began to understand that, that, that when God begins to speak to you and gives you new ideas, these thoughts are crazy and they're not gonna make sense. They're not gonna make sense to your family. They're not gonna make sense to your friends. They're not gonna make sense to uh, your community. When I tendered my resignation, and God spoke to me and said, you could stay here, you could get married, you can live in a house with a white picket fence, or I will make you a world influencer. I took the influencer and I had to start all over again. And God had to rebuild my paradigm. The problem that I had, brothers and sisters, is this, that there was no mentor that was talking this language until God introduced me to the kingdom, the message of the kingdom. I I stayed up all night, all day and all night. I was mad with all preachers. And then God said, no, I didn't give all preachers this assignment. I gave you the assignment. You were assigned to build capacity in the next movers and shakers and history makers, people like you. And you know that I'm talking to you because something is moving in your spirit. And it is God at speaking to you and confirming that you are next in line, that you are are an Esther, that you are a, a Joseph, that you are a Mary, that you are a Peter, you are going to be walking on water. And what you are going through right now is a season of transition. God is transitioning you from an old paradigm to a new paradigm. And you are going to get, I call them um, Red Sea rules. You are going to transition from the old into the new. You are a power broker. God God said, you are the head, you are not the tail. He said, you're going to lend to many nations and shall not borrow. He is not talking about you lending to your uncle, your cousin, your sister. We are not talking about that kind of resource. In this season, over the next six years, from 2024 to 2030, mark my word, this is going to be, uh, the next um, five years are going to be years of, of, of open gates and open doors. And I want to say once again, lift up your head, O ye gates, be ye lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the king of glory shall come in. I speak into 2024, the womb of 2024. I speak into the womb of 2025, the womb of 2026, the womb of 2027, the womb of 2028, the womb of 2029, and the womb of 2030. I speak into the womb. These will be years of, 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 of doors opening for you and gates opening for you. And God is going to open up your mind. You are not going to be restricted by limiting beliefs. You are not going to be controlled by pre prevailing cultures. You are not going to be controlled by the negative narrative of the news. You are just going to be controlled by the mind of Christ. The Bible said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. What kind of mind did he have? He had the mind of the transformational leader. And I want you to mark your calendar. Next month in April, we are going to be teaching on transformational leadership. And that's going to be followed up by um, our next teaching, and that is thinking. And then it's going to be 
followed up by Kingdom School of Marketplace Ministry being held in Texas. And if you have not registered, I want you to register right now. And why this is important, unless someone has been where you're trying to go, they cannot lead you anywhere. I ran a country. I'm in the Guinness Book of Records. I am best-selling author. I have multiple businesses. I just uh, uh, spoke um, to uh, an audience at an event that you and had had carried out. I have the receipts. And, 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 and a lot of times we are talking to people that have never been where we're trying to go. I am legitimately in the marketplace. I'm not only in the marketplace, I'm in the faith base. I'm a humanitarian. We have trim global charities. We, I'm not only in the humanitarian, the NGO space, I'm in the faith-based place. I'm not only in the faith-based place, I'm in the virtual space. Space. I'm not only in the virtual space, I'm in the AI space. I'm not only in the AI space, I'm in the crypto space. We have tokens. We are tokenizing. We have the ability to tokenize. We have our own token. I'm not going to be talking about what I haven't done. I want to know where are the gold medalists? Where are those that are, are, are feel stuck and you know that there's got to be something more? Where are those that are misfit? You are square pegs trying to fit in a round hole. People don't get you. People don't don't understand you, but you know that God has a plan for your life. You know that God wants to do something through you, but no one is speaking your language because they think that you're way out there. You don't fit in with your family. They they call you, oh, she thinks she's all of that. He thinks he, he's all of that. You don't even fit in with the church folk. It's almost like you're talking a different language. And just because people are near you, it doesn't mean that they're in the same frequency. And I believe right now, during these uncertain times, this is where dreamers are being raised up. You know, when you look at history, history has been shaped by dreamers and you are one of them. Now, let me get back to my text. Never connect as I had this dream and, and it was prophetic in nature, but he could not articulate it. In the month of July, I want you to meet me at Kingdom School of Ministry. Why? Because I'm going to articulate what you have been sensing. We have eight courses, understanding the kingdom. Everybody talks about the kingdom, but what is the relevance of today? What is the language of the kingdom? What is God speaking? How did I go from abject poverty to becoming a world leader? How did I get there where countries are calling for me? Where I believe Deuteronomy 28 verses one, you're going to lend to many nations. Why? Because I'm going to set you on high above all nations. How did I get to this point? A poor little girl whose father abandoned her who, who ran out of everything to where I am today. I got there with understanding the kingdom. Number two, there's another course that we're going to be teaching you. And that is kingdom economics, biblical finances. You know, the church teaches you how to give, but has any, anyone ever taught you how to get? Then prophets and prophecy. I mean, everything is prophetic today. Everybody wants to be a, a prophet in the church, but what if God called you to be like a Moses who was prophetic, an Abraham who was prophetic, a Esther who was prophetic, Mordecai who was a prophetic intercessor and a prophetic midwife, but yet he was a lawyer. When you look at why God had to replace Peter with Paul, the apostle Paul, is because Paul had capacity he wasn't limited by cultures that had shaped his paradigm. And in this season, you've got to understand that if God has called you to be prophetic like a Daniel, I'm prophetic, but I don't ever call myself prophetess Cindy Trim. I don't have to. I just do the work. I just do it. And you don't need titles. So many have titles, but they don't have the mental. They have titles, they don't have the anointing. They have titles, they don't have the capacity. They don't, they have titles, they don't have articulation. 
I'd rather have the position of power than to have a title. I'd rather nobody call me prophetess and still have the power than to have the title, but no power. Go after the power. The Bible said, behold, I give you power, not just prophetic power, economic power. Right now, we are talking about influencers in this generation and everybody connecting to influencers. What do you think light is? What do you think light is? You are lights of the world. Another word for light is influencer. Another word for light is wisdom. Another word for light is innovative thinker. In another word for light is insight, problem solving. You are the problem solvers. You are the one that brings wisdom. We are gonna solve the problems of our uh, desert communities where you know it's food desert and medical desert. We are the ones that are going to solve that problem. In fact, this weekend, a small group of people that I mentored is over a hundred, but I mentor, they are my protégés. And we'll be meeting this weekend, Saturday, um, in another uh, couple of hours. And we are coming together. And we're, we're not just coming together to eat, to network. What big problems are we going to solve together? And we're going to pool our collective uh, ideas. And, you know, I mentor the best and the brightest in every kind of, of genres. How can you connect? I want you to start with kingdom school of ministry i want you to see me as your daniel to help you to bring articulation to what god is speaking daniel articulated the dream that god gave to nebuchadnezzar and as we look at the unfolding of his dream he saw uh, a statue it was made of gold the head was gold then it was silver then it was brass iron part iron part clay clay and stone and, and what did it represent? It rep represented the unfolding of superpower nations. Today, United States of America is a superpower nation. And thousands of years before United States of America was even birthed in 1776, God showed Nebuchadnezzar symbolically, remember dreams are symbol. He showed him the, the um, superpower nation of gold, which was Babylon, and then silver was Medo-Persian, out of which you get the story of Esther. And then brass was the Greeks. And then irons was um, Rome. And then part iron, part clay was um, uh, uh, um, Rome. And then Great Britain. And then clay was um, the stones, uh, uh, the feet of clay, was United States of America. United States, the ten toes. And it was symbol, symbolic of United States of America being a superpower. And then the stone is the stone age, which is the kingdom. You are lively stones. And if God could give a non-believing heathen man a dream of the unfolding of superpower nation, what about you and I? We don't just want dreams for ourselves. But what if God wants to give you a dream for America, a dream for you for Canada, a dream for the UAE, a dream for Great Britain, a dream for Europe, a dream for Brazil, a dream for Bermuda? Would you suffer from prophetic spiritual amnesia, which would lead into an abortion of the plans of God, or would you be able to hold it? My biggest question to you, do you have a Daniel in your life? Do you have a Mordecai in your life? Someone that will help you to connect. To remember is a word. He couldn't remember. So to forget is to disconnect. To remember is to connect with members or to connect with something. And I think that this world has suffered from spiritual amnesia and it started in the Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve. We lost connection with who we really are. But Daniel saw a time that would come that God would take kingdoms and empires and give it to his people. We are the people that God is giving this kingdom to. 
And it's not just going to be about Elon Musk or Malala Yousafzai or Greta Thunberg or Tim Burns or Oprah Winfrey or Kamala Harris. It's going to be you and I that God is going to anoint and raise up and bring solutions. And all I want you to do is you to give me an opportunity to build structure around what God is doing in the next six years from 2024 to 2030. Listen to be careful. Between 2024 and 2030, gates are gonna be open, doors are gonna be open. This is going to be the next five years, the years of plenty. And then 2031, and for seven years after this, the entire world is going to go into an economic downturn. And the opportunities that God is giving us between 2024 and 2030 will never return until the beta generation. We have alpha generation born 2012. The beta generation will be born 2028. That's what I'm calling them in 2028. When you get to 2040, the beta generation will be leaders around about 2040. They'll be going into leadership 2045. Around about 2045, they will be leaders. If God is going to be using you, he has to give you an opportunity to influence people, individuals that are yet unborn to time. And he wants to use you. And if you give me an opportunity in uh, July of this year, I during our summer intensive at Kingdom School of Marketplace Ministry, we'll talk to you about helps and hospitality. Another word is customer experience. How are the big five doing it? They're using the same principles that we use to create ushers and deacons, they have taken that, transformed it into Six Sigma and customer experience, and they are crushing it. When you talk about kingdom economics, biblical finances, let me just give you one principle. Write this word down, Taruma. I don't know if you know what a Taruma is, but when you read the story in the book of uh, Kings, where Elijah says to a widower, says, what are you doing? Give me to eat. She says, I'm making a meal. And then me and my son are going to die. This is my last meal. He said, give me that. Give me what you needed. And watch God multiply your wealth. What he was asking her to do and connecting her to was a kingdom principle of wealth. And that was the Taruma. I'm going to float that at a, as a balloon. What can you do with the $1,000 seed? The revelation of a $1,000 seed broke the spirit of poverty of my life. It wasn't a paycheck. It was me understanding kingdom economics, biblical finances. As we're moving, if you give me six days, eight courses, and one incredible experience where heaven will touch earth. I promise you, you will walk away. Unlike Nebuchadnezzar, who did not have the capacity to not only hold on to what he was called to do, but he had a Daniel to come alongside of him to interpret it. Let me be your Daniel in July of this year. Kingdom School of Ministry. Now, I made an offer yesterday. I want to make an offer to you. Um, the number one, the first person that signs up now, you will not only get, you know, an, an offering and that's a discount, but I, I, I want to personally take you to lunch um, the Saturday before the school starts. And I want to pour into your life. The first person that signs up right now number six and number 20 and we will call you today i want you to go to the site right now 
and sign up right now for Kingdom School of Marketplace Ministry. Could things be the way they are because you are the way you are? And what one thing can you change that can change everything? You could change your paradigm. Jesus said, foxes have holes, the birds of the air have nests, but the son of man had not where to lay his head. What does it mean? Foxes conceptualize in holes, birds conceptualize, or they conceive in nests. But he's saying, there is no one that can conceive what I want to download to a generation unborn to time. What if what you are carrying is for your grandchildren and great-grandchildren? Would you want your great-grandchildren to struggle like you are struggling? What about your children? You were born to change the world. How do I know? Because you showed up at this webinar. Let me give you a couple of more points before we close out. But we're living in a world where everything is changing, education. We have personalized learning, virtual reality classroom, lifelong learning, technology. We have quantum computing right now. And it's, it's revolution, revolutionizing data processing, encryption. We have AI-powered healthcare, Internet of Things that is automating our efficiency. Jobs, we're losing jobs. The jobs that are being lost are, are routine manual labor, administrative, clerical work, customer service. It used to be that if a person lost, lost their job, they could get a quick job at one of the fast food restaurants they could bust tables. I was just in Europe and they had a AI run robot that picked up my um, cutlery, that picked up my cups and my saucers and my plates. It used to be human beings. But when you when I went to Europe, it was a robot that was doing all of that. So a lot of the customer service and support that we used to have, a lot of jobs that we could just pick up, this is being taken over by AI and by robot, transportation, delivery system, I mean, retail, sales position. You can usually during Christmas time when you needed more money, you, you would normally be able to pick up a job as a, as a sales personnel in one of the stores. But it's not easy like that anymore. Accounting, bookkeeping, those that went to school in the last couple of years that got a degree in accounting, AI empowered now, all of the processes, invoices, expense tracking, financial reporting, all of that is being reduced. You don't need bookkeepers anymore, telemarketing. We know it's AI driven, medical diagnosis, AI driven, legal research and document review, AI empowerment, e insurance, underwriting, language translation, content, financial advisor, manufacturing, HR, real estate appraisal, maintenance, repair, journalism, news reporting. Do you understand what I'm saying? Well, Dr. Trim, should I be afraid? No, you should be aware. What is God up to? And how can you get involved? I have made the shift and I want to help you to make the shift too. And this is why, as we begin to close out our session, why would God give Nebuchadnezzar a dream? Maybe because he had the paradigm and he had the paradigm of leadership, not fellowship, but he had the paradigm of leadership. And in the unfolding of God's plan, in that dream that began with Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar lacked four things. Number one, he lacked capacity. Jabez's prayer in uh, First Chronicles, oh, that thou would enlarge my capacity, my ability to think big. In this season, God is increasing your capacity. How is he doing it? Through persecution. Persecution and the trials that you're going through is not to make you bitter, not to make you a victim, but it's to build capacity for your next and not your now. Always remember, God will never allow a giant in your vicinity unless you're 
a giant slayer. You got capacity. Number two, he lacked context. What we're doing in Kingdom's School of Marketplace Ministry is giving you context. That's the parable of Matthew 13. Uh, um, a sower went and sowed seed. Some fell by the wayside, stony places, thorny places, and then good ground. Please type in, I am good, good ground. Then capability. That's the skill. Solomon called for people to chop trees down because they had skill. So going back to Alvin Toffler, the greatest challenge for this generation is not to read or write, and it's not arithmetic. It's the skill of learning, unlearning, and relearning. The world into which you and I were born no longer exists. And even if you got a degree yesterday, that degree is obsolete. What One of the things that I love about the Bible is because it's not about information. It's about revelation. And that's why the Bible says that the word of God is quick, powerful, sharper than any two-edged sword. It's dynamic. It's ever-changing. And then the fourth thing that he lacked, he lacked competency. That is mastery. Moses had a vision, and Basileo and Alihab had the competency. And so there are cultural and social algorithms that cause a sp spontaneous abortion, spiritual amnesia, where you cannot recall instructions and things that God has called, called you to do. He lacked spiritual strength and fortitude in his womb. And it's almost like Sarah, Hebrews 11, 11. The Bible said, by faith, Sarah herself also conceived seed. She received strength, excuse me, to conceive seed. She was barren in her mind. Therefore, she was barren in her body. Her womb could not produce. And a lot of us have barren spiritual wombs. We can't bring forth thoughts and ideas and re revelation and books and products. We get stuck in our head. Why? Because we're barren in our mind. And all of us were educated in a Babylonian system of education that controls and limits thinkers and turns thinkers into followers. But we are introduced to Daniel who refused to be a follower. He became a leader. And as a result of that, God kept promoting him and promoting him. And government after government administration leaned on him and relied on him because he was not just a prophetic intercessor and a prophetic midwife. He also had the ability to articulate what, what heaven was up to. This world is pregnant right now. And this is what we are picking up. And you and I are carrying the seeds of purpose and the seeds of potential. Will they be aborted or will they be birthed out? In Ju July of this year, Kingdom School of Market Place Ministry, let us help you to birth out the next. Eight courses, six days, one incredible experience and watch your life, your success, your prosperity be put on autopilot. These next six years, lift up your head, O ye gates, be lifted up, you have the lasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. The next uh, five years are going to be years of plenty. And then there's going to be 3031, after 3030, there's going to be a great shift the opportunities that God are, is giving us will never return in our generation. It will be given to another. And so I want you to be a part of what God is doing. I want to be able to lay hands. The first person that signs up pays in full. The sixth person and the 20th person. I will personally do lunch with you and personally pour into you. And this is my offer. And so, Father, we give you praise and honor and glory. We refuse to stand and watch other people advance. I pray that you would give us prophetic insight. And even as Daniel stood before kings and rulers and gave articulation, 
for what they lack capacity for and competence for. You gave him the capacity, you gave him the competence. Let the mental and the anointing of Daniel fall upon us right now. He began to interpret the dream of Nebuchadnezzar, which was the unfolding of superpower nations. He saw Babylon, which represent brute power. And Babylon gave us so much. Babylon, out of Babylon, Babylon was able to birth out dreams and dreamers. They were able to set into motion uh, um, uh, the, the golden kingdom. They gave us the law of Hammurabi. They gave us an understanding of government. They gave us specialization in labor and scribes and builders and carpenters. They gave us systems of communication. They gave us writing and trade and taxation that was hidden in the womb of Babylon. And had, 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 had Daniel not interpreted it, it would have been carried to the grave with them. And then there was this silver kingdom that was the Mede, uh, Medes and Persia. They gave us glass, uh, glass, glazed bricks and metal works and banking and polo and taxation and ice cream. Then came the brass kingdom, which was Greek. So they gave us language and architect and literature and poetry and drama and the Olympics and philosophy. And then there was the iron kingdom. That's the Roman government. They gave us architect and engineers and highways and three course meals and mass entertainment had had Daniel not interpreted it that would have been carried to the grave and then there was the iron kingdom a part iron and part clay which was a uh, great britain and great britain gave us america father we would not be here had it not been for Daniel interpreting the dream, they gave us the English language and agriculture and teas and jams and biscuits and literature and crime and fiction and Peter Pan and Alice in Wonderland and Rolls Royce and Bentley and Jaguars and Ashton Market, Martin and Oxford and Cambridge and the uh, Commonwealth of Nation. Father, then there was the United States of America. And from out of our womb, we birthed rodeo and the revolver and skyscraper and chewing gum and blue jeans and coca-cola and jazz and animated movies and, and 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 the internet and silicon valley and apple and 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 all of the big five it was birthed out of this kingdom but you had to use someone and i decree and declare now, even as we come to the stone age, the stone kingdom, your children, myself, and those believers that are listening today, I decree and declare, we are rising up and we are taking a place amongst the great, amongst the disruptive thinkers, amongst the dreamers, amongst the visionaries. And I decree and declare what you are carrying will not be carried to the grave. You will die empty in Jesus' name. And so I hope that you got something out of this. What are you feeling? What you are not feeling is just an attack from the enemy. What you are feeling is the enemy trying to abort the greatness in you, the gifts in you, the books in you, the business in you, the NGOs in you, the ideas in you, the breakthroughs in you, the city adjusting uh, strategies in you, the nation building strategies in you. I want to connect with you. Make sure you stay connected with us. In another couple of weeks, another couple of days, we're announcing the next free webinar where we are going to be talking to you about transformational leaders, you being the head and not the tail. And then after that, we're going to take you into Kingdom School of Marketplace Ministry. And then after that, we're going to be talking to you about the future of work. I pray that something that I said in this webinar helped you. I pray that you understand, unless there's a call to action, Nobody is going to respond. This is my call to action to you. Register now. Kingdom School of Marketplace Ministry. God bless you all.
जी